Bobby, it's your honor. because these moments have been 43 years in the making. South Sydney finally walking out for another grand final. Let's let the crowd tell the story. Unbelievable moment in rugby league. I have watched a lot of grand finals since uh, the late 60s, the first televised in 1967, but I can't recall a build up to a grand final. Anything like this as Des Hasler continues to encourage and promote the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. They're about to do battle for the ultimate prize in rugby league the Proven Summons Trophy. The field of dreams for many. The place that legend is created. The blue and white army. The red, the green of South Sydney. 83,000 of them here at Rugby League headquarters. ANZ Stadium where the Olympics of 2000 were held. And of course she is here, she's in the house tonight. Kathy Freeman. 400 at the 2000 Sydney Games and she's here tonight I'm led to believe with her husband and young child. Hasler's making them wait. This will be all part of the plan. What a nervous wait it will be though for the number 19 Moses Mbai, Greg Inglis. Looking impatient isn't he? Several of these players are rookies to grand final football. In fact, only two of the South Sydney players have played in a grand final. Still Canterbury making South Sydney wait. Greg Inglis, of course, won a grand final with Melbourne. Lottie Takiri won his first and only grand final with Brisbane. And of course, uh, Greg won a Clive Churchill medal in 2007. And there's Michael Ennis addressing his players. A tough moment for the skipper, ruled out of this game after fractures in his foot last week. But he's had the final word and the final hug there with Josh Reynolds. Hey, Brett, what's it like down there? I mean, it's deafening enough up here. Yeah, it's unbelievable, Raps. This is way louder than during the e origin. The roar and now the, now the wait for the Bulldogs. You can see Ennis there with Canterbury still here, but mate, this is unbelievable. Just the pre-match build-up. I've been here since 12 o'clock, and the atmosphere and the vibe in the place is electric. 
Well, just for the benefit of people taking the telecast, as Canterbury come down the, the raceway behind their joint captains, James Graham and Trent Hodkinson. James Graham becomes the first Englishman to captain a grand final side since Tommy Bishop back in 1973. The scary man from the end of the street alongside of young Hodkinson. Listen to this. Pritchard in the 17 shirt finally goes out to be welcomed by the blue and white army. James Graham has played in seven grand finals. That's him on camera. Six grand finals for St. Helens. He won the first of them in 2006 and played in the 2012 grand final for Canterbury. We're standing by for the anthem. Bit of a different build to Tommy Bishop, right? James Graham and looking for a different result to them. I don't know that he's any more scary though, Peter. I knew Tommy pretty well. He was a scary man. Look at that from the sky. Wonderful stadium. When it's filled to capacity, there's nothing better anywhere in the world. Let's go to the national anthems. They're just about ready. To sing the national anthem, please welcome from Les Miserables, Simon Gleason. Sydney going into their final huddle and Canterbury doing the same. John Sutton talking to his team. You can just see through there, through that picture there. That, by the way, John is the first South Junior captain, or should I say the first junior of South Sydney to captain a Rabbitohs Premiership deciding side since 1935. It's a massive honour for him tonight. South Sydney through and through. James Graham laying down the law here, you'll find. And these opening exchanges are so important. Both clubs, excellent front runners. So you get in front, invariably difficult to run down. The opening 20 minutes be crucial in this 80 minute contest. They played twice this year, Canterbury and South. They came out of it one apiece, down again from the skies, which have turned from day to night. Daylight savings starting here today in New South Wales. Spider cam, a shot across the ground, across the, the ultimate prize in rugby league, the Proben Summons Trophy. And here's the kickoff. We're underway. One of the most awaited grand finals of all time. Burgess and taken by Graham. And Tolman, the polar bears. And Burgess has come away pointing at his 
Pointing at his cheekbone, I think. Something's happened with Sam Burgess. It's a cheekbone, Rebs. Sutton. Yeah, there looks like a little bit depression there. That's his mother. The first thing I saw Burgess do was come out of the tackle, pointing at his, his cheekbone and calling for the trainer. He's got the head of James Graham. The poster boys of this grand final have come together. Canterbury coming away with the ball. Thompson's got it now, just outside the 20 metre line. And South charging up in defence. So now for Josh Jackson. Brad, have you got, uh, got a view on what happened with Sam? Yeah, I think we've got a turnover, Ray. But uh, I just heard a South trainer talk to Mark Ellison. He said he had a fractured cheekbone. Well, here he is with the ball now. Talk about John Sattler in 1970. We've got, I think, something similar here. Now for Dylan Walker. And he's able to stand and get the ball away to Carey. And Carey's driven down by Greg Eastwood. 20 metres out from the line. That's David Tyrrell. Towards the southern end of the ground, run South Sydney. And George Burgess on the end of the dummy. has gone away to Carey and gone out to Ava. He'll play the ball just out from the line. This is the last tackle then. And spun back and away from Reynolds to put a kick, a banana kick in. And Williams is taken down by George and Sam Burgess. Well, if he's got a broken cheekbone, it's not that apparent that he's talking and he's hitting hard and he's forced an error here. Well, the people at the ground won't know that Sam Burgess is in pain and nor will many of his teammates. And he's doing his best not to let on at all. He's already charged the ball up, despite being knocked and fractured. Yep. And he's coming up with some big defence as well. He goes to his go-to man here, Inglis, and he, he says to Greg Inglis, I broke my cheekbone. So Greg Inglis said, you'll be fine, Sam. You see him here. So South Sydney with an ideal opportunity. Reynolds, soft hands away. And Walker is able to unload again. It's his second offload in as many carries. And now Reynolds will play the ball. Nine metres out from the Canterbury line. From Coruscant, it's gone away to George Burgess. And George will play the ball. Just a metre out from the line. Canterbury desperate in defence. South Sydney running around Burgess. Coruscant, Keary. There's a try coming, is there? Johnston bombarded over there. And he'll play the ball as quickly as possible. It comes back from Arbar. It's gone to John Sutton. And Sutton to play the ball. Two metres out from the line. Coruscant, the dummy half. Now it's out to Keary. Here is uh, George Burgess charging hard. Two metres from the line on the fifth tackle. What a start to the game. Here's Reynolds now. Plenty of time to kick. Where Dylan Walker goes after Josh Morris. He's he's held, and he's in the field of play. Well, that's outstanding defence from the Bulldogs. Particularly the try save on Alec Johnson, who was around them on the outside. And we've seen him score so many this year on that play. But the cover defence was extraordinary. Played by Tolman, now to Williams. And you can prepare for the start of a, a football game, whether you're a player or a commentator, but I was watching Burgess and Graham, you had to be. You just had to be. And I don't know the extent, but it looked like he fancies that he's got a fractured cheekbone. Johnston on the 40-metre line. Here's Ava. Look at that fin from him. But they handle him, Canterbury. Umbai in 19. Left eye, the centre in four. Now for George Burgess. He's doing a lot of work. Lots of work. 
So to the 40 metre line, and Kiri offloads. Sutton just holding the ball. Taken by Reynolds, quick play the ball. And dancing away again is, um, on this occasion, we've got Corris out, 20 metres out. And from Kiri, it's come across for Reynolds to set himself. And he kicks down towards the uprights. Perrett's underneath it, takes it safely. And eventually Perrett will be tackled about 10 metres out from his line. Loses the ball. South play the advantage. Here's Dylan Walker. Here's Lottie Dekiri. Lottie Dekiri. He scores. He scored the first try in 2000. Playing for Brisbane in that grand final 14 years ago. And I think he scored the first try. 14 years later, playing for South against Canterbury. And most importantly, Shane Hayne thinks that as well. Plenty of turnover of possession from the Bulldogs at the opening stages of this game. Defensively, they've fought fire with fire. But as Sam Perrett goes down, Adam Reynolds will come through. And there's a high shot there on Sam Perrett. The ball comes out. And then Dylan Walker was able to get the football down to the right after Ben Teo scooped up the loose ball and Takiri back on the inside, but there might be a problem here for the Rabbits. So all of the, the history associated with Takiri scoring tries, the first try in grand finals 14 years apart. Looks as though it's going to come asunder with Perrot obviously hit high. South Sydney fans would be hard to convince that it is high. Okay. Let's see what the decision okay. is. No try, it'll be a penalty. Going to bring Darren Lockyer here into commentary. 2011, he played a semi-final with a broken cheekbone. What do they like to play with? I think the hardest part for Sam Burgess, if it's broken, will be to talk. You saw him talking to Greg Inglis earlier as we see the replay here. If it's a depressed fracture, the hardest part will be communicating with his teammates. Now, I did it with 15 minutes to go. Sam Burgess has done it with 80 minutes to go. So from somebody who knows something about it, Darren Lockyer, Josh Jackson now playing the ball, and now Aidan Tottenham. So I don't think anybody has been using their seat since the start of this game. They've gone back to their seats now. Well, they've only been going six minutes. Feels like we've been going an hour. And here is Graham again. 35 metres out from the South Sydney line. Aidan Tolman inside the 30. Sam Burgess, of course, his last game of rugby league that we know of, heading to rugby next year. Here's the kick by Reynolds. Johnston did very well. He took that very confidently for a kid. I think he's only just turned 20. He's done a good job on a couple of occasions fielding kicks as Avar takes it outside his own 10. Moses and Bai is working out of dummy half for the Bulldogs. And Sam Burgess obviously in the wars. Greg Inglis then. South rucking the ball out to the 35 metre point. Is the wind playing any factor down there, Brad? It's just started, right? There was a forecast at 8 o'clock for a 30k wind to come from the south southeast. It's kicked in a little bit earlier. Come here to watch the game as well. So from the south southeast, we'll be coming from the southerly. That's right, mate, where all the south fans are. Good on you, mate. So Canterbury then away from the 20 metre line with Mitch Brown about to play the ball. A departing player to Cronulla for next year. And of course, Michael Ennis going with him. And spare a thought for Michael, who's on camera there. He uh, played in the grand final in 2012. Way back in um, 96, I think it was, uh, 2006, I should say. He was robbed of a chance of playing in the grand final with Brisbane when he was there with an early season ending injury in that year as well. So he knows the feeling. And this ball has been driven over the touchline at the 
northern end of the ground on the eastern side. Yeah, nothing fancy there from the Bulldogs at all. In, try, in fact, they haven't been very creative with the ball in hand at all. They've defended their line grimly. They've turned them away on a couple of occasions. They've had the benefit of a video referee overturning a try, but they're still there at nil all. And they'll graft away and kick away and tackle away for yep. as long as they can. The other problem for Sam Burgess may well be when that starts to swell. Happy all the way. His vision could easily be affected. And it looks like it's starting to do that as we speak. Lottie Takiri from the scrum room. Takiri, referee saying that's okay, referring to the fact that he might have been not facing up the ground, but in fact, sideline to sideline, played there by Sam Burgess. And uh, this is Tio who comes away with the ball, jumper number 11, Ben Tio. And uh, from Torres South, come on to Dylan Walker, who puts on a sprint and looks to unload out the back. He was on his knees, he got up and went again. It's gone on, it's out now to Reynolds. He gets a short ball to George Burgess. And George, George, George had Greg Inglis screaming for the ball. Now Reynolds shows the ball, puts a little kick in down to Thompson, and Thompson is able to bring it back 15 metres out from the line. Now for left. To the 20 metre line, Canterbury's in. Going live around Australia and into 90 countries around the globe with uh, Graham playing that ball has come away through Hopkinson and it's out with Williams now. Two mistakes by Canterbury. This is their seventh carry of the football, their seventh set. They've completed four of the seven. Tolman playing the ball under George Burgess's tackle. Now it's away for Reynolds to chip it down into Johnston's corner. That's where they seemingly prefer to, prefer to go. And Johnston has been pushed back inside the 20. Several metres under the tackle of Jackson and Laffey. Now John Sutton, he has a turn. Brings it out towards the 30 metre line. 11 minutes gone in the game. Was the great John Sattler sitting next to Bob McCarthy. Of course, Sats played with that broken jaw in the 1970 Grand Final. And he went on to make an after-match speech at the same time uh, with nobody really knowing that he'd smashed his jaw. And uh, there's a lot of history sitting there between John Sattler and Bob McCarthy who scored that intercept try in 67 when these two did combat many, many years ago. Sachs looks as though he's in a bit of pain already. Yeah, well, as we watch Sam Burgess deal with his issues out here, we may be seeing history in the making here tonight if the Englishman can battle on and play a prominent part in a South victory. This game keeps bringing up big players, big moments. Burgess it was on that occasion, taking Tolman. This is Graham. And Canterbury working it down into the 30 metre zone. Here's Williams. Holds it back, knocked forward by Canterbury. Yeah, I think we might have a knock on South first, do we? Right. He's just, saying just something about a knock on just South have a look Sydney. Whether Takiri's hand touches it. Yep, thanks. And blood coming from the mouth of Burgess. So is there a touch from South? The ball. No, it's come no. off Morris first. I think the referee thought Takiri got a hand to it, but that picture shows that Josh Morris touched it first and it will be a South Sydney feed. Well, they're doing very well, Canterbury. The opposition are perfect with the football. Seven from seven. They've had all the field position. And the Bulldogs have handed the football over cheaply on a number of occasions, but it is nil all. And this is the kind of scrap the dogs excel in. Trent in close. The cheek of Sam Burgess. Not Adam. looking at all, at all pretty. And I suppose there's got to be a question mark on just how long will he go? Will he see the match out? Will the medical people think that he should he should come on? I have no doubt. It. He'll play the 80 minutes. There's players who can play with injury, and Sam Burgess is one of those players. Comments from Andrew Johns. John Sutton playing the ball inside the 40-metre line. Now Reynolds turned in for George Burgess, who seems to have amped up his own game, if that's possible. 
probably knowing his brother has taken a fairly heavy hit. Here he is again, Sam Burgess. And they're good meters, aren't they? Taken by um, Tolman over the top. Reynolds puts a kick in. It's high, down to Perrett. He's been a little bit suspect. Oh, what's happened here? As it comes He's off Sarah dead. to an offside John, player. John, the drilling that it came off Luke Keary. Oh, he was a chaser on the kick, Josh Jackson. A little bit dusty after the collision. This will be interesting to watch one. back. I've actually ruled it's gone backwards off South's hand. Perrett's um, the one. Josh. Keary's yes, hand's man. the elevated one. Exactly it's gone right. back off him. They've got it absolutely right. So that man is not offside, Josh Jackson, but he might be offside with Ben set. Teo, yeah, taking him right. around the throat. Tackle one, Josh. Wait for the whistle, mate. Use your foot. Let's play on. Mark is up. Wait for the whistle, tackle Josh. Tackle one called against Jackson. Foot. Familiar territory for the dogs. Mitch Brown taking it out. Tackle two. Out of the net. Sam Burgess involving himself in the tackle. I don't know how much pain he's in, but whatever it is, he's playing through it at the moment. Played by Williams. Back to Tolman. Tolman taken by Tio and by Tyrrell. So we've got the three T's out there. Played by Tolman. On it goes to Graham. Turned outside, inside for Perrett. And South Sydney do exactly that with Sam Perrett. They turn him upside down and put him away. Now it's come to Graham. And Graham puts a kick in. And it's going to bounce away to the sideline. Finds the line, 25 out. What can't he do? That was nearly a 40-20. I think he was inside his own 40. Well, if you want something done, you've got to do it yourself sometimes. And the skipper was thinking, look, we're not making many yards here over the advantage line. They're building us. Someone kick it. You won't kick it, I'll kick it. No, no, he's just outside. Wasn't a bad one either for a front rower. Multi-skilled. Remember, there were two people in that head clash. Sam Burgess and that man, James Graham. He's come out of it. There was some Liverpool kiss. Yeah, a lot the better. But this is the sort of scrap, this is the sort of game that the Bulldogs love. They love the battle, and they're in a battle. Well, Dave Tyrrell has come off, so he's taken the benefit of the first rest period of the, the forwards. And I would have thought if, uh, if Sam was had any intention of coming off, he would have been the one to do it there. Well, that's him taking it forward outside his own 40 now. It means all three Burgess brothers are out there at the same time. With Thomas now into the game, taking the football up now. So it's a strong run, and here's another Burgess running into a shoulder of Graham. Not a shoulder charge, but that was the point of contact. Here's Carey trying to step his way through. He'll play the ball on the 30-metre line back to Coruscant. And now it's come away for Reynolds to kick. He's cleaned up in back play, but the referee said OK. Goes down to Perrett, bounces away, and forced back Knock there, but it'll Sarah's be interesting. Here. Knock on, I think. Change over. On Knocked on by Dylan Walker. Change over just here. Well, well Ray, the further we go well, with the score right. at nil all, the more well, important it's, it's going to be to see who Marcus, scores first. If up, South Marcus. Sydney score oh, first, Sam. they can get oh, into their rhythm and start to play some oh, football. God. If the Bulldogs score first, after this battle they've been through, it will totally change the complexion of the game and could completely change South Sydney's attitude. It's vital now who gets first points on the board. Parrott taking it away from the dummy half position. Canterbury with John Sutton offside. You heard the referee call. South Sydney defending just on the Canterbury side of halfway. And there's Umbai. He was taken high. Penalty against Souths. And that is just the second penalty awarded in the game so far. Approaching the quarter of the game, Mark. And 20 minutes in, and this is Burgess coming across, coming up off the football, did George. But this is the best opportunity the Bulldogs have had Behind with a full it, set inside the opponent's 30. They've had 10 sets in the game. They've completed seven. South Sydney have had nine and completed nine. And it's been very much the, the sermon of Des Hasler to Canterbury. Hold the football and you win the football games. Well, at the moment, they only just be getting a pass mark from Des. But here they are with a very good chance. Hodkinson down to Williams. It's knocked on. Well, the advantage applies to South Sydney. He's got to expect that ball there, Tony Williams. 
Greg Inglis then with a long run. Something like 15 metres out to the 30 metre line. Even if you think you're a decoy. Coruscant on to Carey, on to Sutton. And Sutton is taken over there by Reynolds on the 40 metre line. But they, the last two runs by South have been very good. 63% time. Canterbury comes from Carey and goes away to Arva. And both he and Walker look dangerous when they've got the football, don't they? Here's a penalty going to South Sydney. And that's a valuable one. Canterbury missed their opportunity at the other end, squandered possession cheaply. South Sydney immediately into their rhythm, work the ball forward and force the penalty. And now can come in with the structured set of six in attack. Just some little fraying of the edges around the Bulldogs now. So we've had one try disallowed in the game this far, and we're a quarter of the way through the grand final. Lonnie to carry a try denied for foul play preceding the try. Here is John Sutton trying to dance through. Seven metres out from the line. Played back for Keary, and he goes away. They've got an extra man. Alex Johnston! Johnston has scored. Souths have got the first try. Not by the old fella, but by the young bloke. And it's an action replay of the second try they scored last weekend against the Roosters. Albeit on an earlier tackle on this occasion. But good vision from Luke Keary. And again, it shows the confidence he has with his place in the side. He creates a three on two, and Alex Johnson, as he is so often the recipient down that left-hand side in getting the ball down. So four nil in favor of South Sydney. They were denied on the other side, the other winger, the other flanker, Lottie Takiri, who I refer to there affectionately as the old fella, and the young bloke who was five. It's interesting to note when Lottie Takiri scored that try in his grand final victory in 2000 playing with Brisbane, this fellow on the other flank. Alex Johnston, his wing partner tonight, his wing man. He was five years of age. And Alex has scored his 21st try this year. He's a real wonder boy. In just his 18th game. Absolutely stuff. Stuff that, as uh, somebody was saying earlier, dreams are made of. Rookie year, 21 tries. Only one South Sydney player has done it before, and I think only seven players in history have done it. To score tries beyond 20. There's Reynolds from near the sideline. The touchies have moved away. No, no goal, but 4 nothing thanks to the finishing ability of Alex Johnston. Well, it's been a brilliant opening to the game, hasn't it? The Bulldogs with so much tough defence, but it was a mistake with the ball that eventually brought their downfall. And South Sydney perfectly worked it in position. Looked like the big play was coming to the right. Dragged the fence that way and snuck down a little short side. That will settle down South Sydney enormously. Now the pressure goes on the next team to score. Well, Lafay starts the game again and George Burgess comes powering back. 18 metres away from his own line. Play over on the eastern side. The, uh, the game is sell out. We'll get the official crowd figure later on, but it'll be up near 84,000 people because I think they put an extra thousand seats in here to try and crack the 84,000. We've got a head knock out there, Rafael, one of the Burgess brothers. You can't see the number on his back. It's not this man, that's Tom, so it's George out the back, the trainer, waving to the sidelines. So we've got another Burgess brother with a head injury, and here. John Sutton running into a hard tackle from Greg Eastwood right in the centre of the ground. He's come back from Reynolds and kicks. This time, there's no charge down attempt on him. They've really peppered Reynolds with the tackle on the kick. That's the first one they've left him alone. Here's Perrett. 
the, and the returns from the kickoffs are the ones that have brought South undone. It was the return of the first kickoff of the game that's fractured the cheekbone of Sam Burgess. After scoring the try, they catch the kickoff, it goes to George Burgess, and he knocks himself out. Here's Aiden Tolman. And he's quite groggy as well. Now working on the halfway line, Dylan Walker jamming in on Hodgkinson. Good read. They are in a bit of trouble there. Creating an overlap. It's the first touch for Dale Finucane. So he's about eight metres into South Territory. And Reynolds puts a grubber kick down in the direction of Inglis. He's got that look of determination. Even the look of revenge on his face. As accidental as the hit might have been, George Burgess going up the tunnel. And Alex Johnston takes a carry for South Sydney now. And we'll get a report from the sideline, I'm assuming that would be a concussion situation. And they need him. He's been the best player in the game so far, George Burgess. Adam Reynolds turning around the corner for Ben Teo, and he takes it out towards the halfway line, where he's met and put away again by Aidan Tolman. One of the unsung heroes on this side is Tolman. He really is held in high regard by Dave Hansen. As Keary puts a kick high down towards Thompson. And Thompson did well. well he put plenty of tests on Corey Thompson. And I can assure you he's answered every one of them right through the year. Just a little bit slow coming back now, the Bulldogs. That try has just taken a bit out of them, a little bit of fatigue. A little tired, and they? Had to do most of the work. They're just starting to catch up with them. Josh Morris then. And there's George Burgess back in the rooms. Finucane with the ball for Canterbury. So Umbai in the 19 shirt is the double half. It's the answer to the puzzle. He's been with us since last weekend. Michael Ennis watching from the benches. Here's Greg Inglis! Bursting through, he's come to Josh Reynolds, he turns him around, he goes inside another, he goes inside Tony Williams, he's looking for support, he's pulled down eventually, or falls down, then Reynolds pushes him back to the ground. It's come away now with Dylan Walker, and Walker's tackle, 12 metres out from the line. Wonderful run by Greg Inglis, now for Sam Burgess, stepping, stepping, and he's close to the line. Now oh, there's a hand in the play of the ball. Yeah, Dale Finucane there, that, that's almost sin -binable. It's a definite professional foul. <sighs> well, he's done it on purpose. He didn't like where this was going. He didn't like the roll on that South Sydney were getting. He could feel a try coming. Look at the body language on the Bulldog players. He will just reach out and snap that ball away. See that? He'll just reach that's out and snap bin. it away. Well, it should be a sin bin. There's no doubt that's what Reynolds is saying. Madge, uh, Madge McGuire is saying the same. <laughs> well, I think he's saying take the two points. No, I, I take your point there, but I think Reynolds said, did you see the hand? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a sin bin offence to do it in that position. But South Sydney, you can feel it now. They're what? really starting to bristle up. What's this telling you, Pete, that taking the two? I know it's a gift too, but, you know, sometimes you think about, well, let's go on with it now. No, it's a grand final. You know, this, is, this is half a try presented to them. They're on top, they know that. All right. So Adam Reynolds, the kid from Redfern, takes the two points. And his dad marched to try and save South Sydney at the Town Hall. Here's this big run by Inglis. I'll come back to that. Look at him through one, through two, comes to a third, leaves him away, gets away from four, turns around five, and then tries to run away from, from Reynolds. I can't count past six. How many of you were cheering for a try there, just for one of those magical grand final moments? You can feel it building there. They'd probably find a way to turn it down. Yeah, South Sydney are into their rhythm. They're on top. And as always, to justify taking the penalty, they need to get to their kick at the end of this set. So Tio it is with the ball. Young Reynolds, I was just going to say, when his dad marched with 80,000 people to the town hall at the back end of the previous millennium, 
Young Adam wanted to go, but his dad said the legs are too small. You wouldn't be able to complete the march. It's too long. Now he's proving somewhat of a hero for South Sydney. Not just in this game. There's a, a run by Coruscant, who was catching the train to go to training. And training with him at North Sydney was Lottie Takiri. The kick into the air as Reed Martin is caught by Inglis. Inglis not held, he broke the tackle. And he's inside the 20, gets it to Walker, puts in a kick, it goes down to the try line, and it's with Josh Jackson, who looks appealingly at the referee, doesn't he? Now it's for Thompson. South away on top at the moment. Tom Burgess in that tackle. Now David Clemmer. And, and Burgess goes in and hits him, hits him low with, I don't know whether it was his hip or his shoulder. Now it's with uh, Tim Brown, the man they call the middle man. Three plates of, of steel in his forehead from uh, friendly fire from Fanukan about eight weeks ago. Here we are on the 30 metre line now. Canterbury was Umba getting it back there for Reynolds and he plugs the ball down and it'll go into the now just inside the South Sydney 20 metre line. Well, that's a 40 20. He was way inside his own 40. <laughs> Wants to check it. Greg Inglis didn't show a lot of urgency, or maybe inside the 40, please. Realised there's no chance of getting there. Inside the 40. Inside the 40. He's almost inside the 30. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Well, Red Peter, thank you. So, Canterbury get the loose head and feed. No, they'll get the They've got a penalty. They get the tap. Oh, they got the tap, of course, under the new rules, yes. Oh, what a turning point that may prove. Josh, you got two balls. They can benefit hit now. Because they were on the ropes, the dogs. Wait, Josh. Wait, wait. They really need something out of this. Finucane. Take a now, Jason. He probably should be in the sim bin. Umbai, the way to Hodkinson, out the back for Perrett, and Perrett is pulled down about seven metres out from the line by Reynolds, with help there from Dylan Walker, now for Williams. Williams comes back towards that corner. He looks through, he gets away! And uh, they're over the line, but the ball has come loose from Josh Morris. Not on. What is that? Scrum. Well, it was a late offload. Morris became alert to it, sprinted towards the gap. The ball popped up, but South Sydney defenders are all over him. In fact, there could be an argument that Reynolds had him before he got the ball. But that's on slow-mo replay. South Sydney quickly on the scene to defuse it. And in these big games, saving tries are just as huge as scoring tries. That's a good one for the Bunnies. Let's go, Adam. Come on. Come on, let's get him in. Form up, boys. Come on. Let's go. Heads in. Let's go down to the sideline. Yes, Brad. Yeah, a bit of deathly Sam. science has gone over the crowd at the moment. They've been up now for 30 minutes. They've been absolutely brief. I was looking at Chorus here after about 10 minutes. He could barely breathe. And now he just seemed to have found his rhythm. A couple of penalties, a bit of momentum. He becomes a real danger now. Well, he hasn't played for eight weeks, Brad. He was out injured. An injury he suffered playing New South Wales Cup. So to come into the game in the important role that he's in for the first game in eight weeks is a massive vote of approval from the coaching staff. He must have great fitness because you go out there in search of your second win. But I've been watching, I was watching him. It was taking a lot of time for him to, to get that second win. But now he's got it. He's in his groove. Clark. Reynolds it is, that plugs the ball down the ground, back into the in goal, Thompson comes away, he knows he has to be urgent and he does well, he gets out 15 metres. And that's just about his best kick tonight, Adam Reynolds, as we see George Burgess coming back out, looking much better than when he went in reverse way. Better than the last time we saw him, it was this play by Lafay, who got up a little bit dusty, I thought. Jackson is with the ball now. So Josh will play the ball. There was some thought that he might play dummy half. James Graham is in a break at the moment. Here is Morris, 30 metres out. Well, I don't think there's any doubt watching this first 30-odd minutes of play that Canterbury 
are far more inconvenienced for having no Ennis than South Sydney are for having no Isaac Luke. Coruscant's done a great job and no one seems to be taking over the real role for the Bulldogs. So Reynolds now, that kick, not one of his better kicks. Johnston marking it and taking the defence 35 metres out from his own line. Defence led by the kicker. And now for Ava. And he looks dangerous every time he touches the ball. But then on the other side of the ground, Dylan Walker looks equally dangerous. So it's with Clark now. And he will play it five or six metres into Canterbury Territory. And Coruscant gets a break. And Cole Turner's gone out there. So as Sam Burgess off close to Kiri. Morris jumping on board. Youngster who was turned away by three Sydney clubs. He's now in a grand final, all of his own. And here's Inglis coming in from the back. And they work him into a standing position and make the tackle. Now for Reynolds, puts in a little kick and Perrot is there. Oh! Rounded the ball. Line drop out time. That was a chance for South. Yeah, he just wanted that one to bounce up for him so he could get some run onto it. He let it bounce one more time. And it spirited forward into the end goal. And in the end, it was a hard one to get. Watch this. Short grubber. He just wants this bounce there. It doesn't come and sprints away from him. Well, we've got a, short, a quick restart here. Luke. Just release it. Luke, let him go. Sam. Josh. Josh. Go back. Just go back. Go back. Go back. We're going with the goal line drop. Tom. We're just going with the goal line drop. Oh, no, we'll go back to the goal line drop out. Goal line drop. The set two between Luke Keary and yeah, Luke Keary, Sam Keary. He was appealing for a headbutt. On the line, boys. Come on, Sam. Sam, come on. That's a hip toss. Well, the crowd venting their uh, lack of appreciation for what they've just seen. George Burgess, by the way, has gone back on. Here's the young bloke I was talking about. And it was Moses. Three clubs didn't want to know him, and he came from the Burley Bears. And got a chance. Guess who found him? None other than Canterbury great Mark Hughes. As recruitment man at South Sydney. So it's a good story in Luke Keary. This is Tom Burgess. Back to the 40-metre line. Playing it back for Keary, who's... Gone into dummy half. Keep an eye on that. Whether or not Clark goes here. It looks like Keary is going to do the job on a permanent basis with Coruscant off. And here's Sam Burgess angling back from the right side of the ground. Takes the tackle on the 20 metre line. Keary out from dummy half. Now Sutton. Now away for Arvar. And he falls at the hands of Josh Reynolds and plays the ball 15 metres out. Here it is with Walker on the other side of the ground. That pass looked a little bit suspect, but it will be played by South, close to the line. They come back 15 to go forward. Off the boot of Sutton. Up goes Josh Morris, and he's marked. And was he tackled in mid-air? That's my question. Clark and Burgess, the tacklers, and Morris. Well, Josh has got a problem now. I still ask the question, was he tackled in mid-air? Oh, yeah, I think that's the question Josh Morris yep. might be asking. Just check the contact. He wasn't mate. too happy Morris, with the contact. Yeah, we'll check yeah. it. We'll check. Up he goes. He's getting plenty of coverage. They do tackle him just before he gets down on the ground. Jason Clark. Uh, you'll find, well, I would imagine you'll find will be penalised. But more concern, I would imagine, is over the health Yep, thanks, of Josh Morris. Yeah. That yeah, troublesome knee of his. Yeah. yeah, the penalty about to be awarded. Up out the back. And with time back on. Under five minutes to go in his first half. You're doing a remarkable job to hang in here, Canterbury. Yeah, and with all due respect to Josh Morris, he was asking the question that Ray Warren was asking. Was I tackled in the air, sir? Right, thank you. He seems to be jogging up okay now to take the tap kick. Play on. Five minutes of the first half remaining and Tony Williams. Four and a half minutes to be precise. The ball goes away to David Clemmer and Clemmer is forced back and across the ground by South Sydney's defence. Led there by Tom Burgess in jumper number 17. Here's Tim Brown. 
Brown offloading, Hodkinson passing, Williams on to Morris, Morris to the 40, and not held, he broke the tackle. Tackle three! I don't think there's much wrong with his knee, to be quite frank with you. He, he was quite free there and quite keen to go on. And now Tim Brown will play the ball. Well, it's like South Sydney's opponents in the last three weeks. The Bulldogs just can't seem to make the round. Well, Reynolds handing it back then for Jackson. And Jackson is cut down in a low tackle. That's uh, Jason Clark underneath. Boom by a right. Reynolds a chip kick. Down into the, uh, the 10 metre line. Oh, it's batted by Thompson. Knock on. And it's been change knocked over. forward by Corey over. Thompson. But it, it was a change chance that was change worth over, taking. Boys. White John for 19 him. from 19 Here's completions the for the King Rabbits Jackson. and oh, Canterbury. I told you, watching Thompson, it was a chance well taken, but uh, Des Hasler has been preaching to Canterbury right through the finals. Hold the football and you'll win. And they have, but they've completed 13 from 18. The South Sydney have been perfect, haven't they? Yes. At 19 from 19. That's just wonderful. And at the moment, the Bulldogs are suffering the same fate as Manly, the Roosters, and other teams that have tried to topple this side. They can't make ground with the ball. They can't get any football on. So here's South now with only a matter of two and a half minutes to go before the break. Played there by George Burgess. Reynolds outside, inside. Inglis puts a high kick up in the direction of Perrett. They go through, and Perrett's equal to it now. Well done, Sam Perrett. Bringing it down out of the nighttime skies. And to Corey Thompson as tackles now. 15 metres out from his line. The score is still only 6 0, though, isn't it? I mean, for all the battering they've taken, the Bulldogs, they're still there. They're hanging around. The problem is, Gus, you're looking at the team in red and green, which is the best second half side in the comp, up against the club that only had two behind them in rankings for second halves. I'm talking about the Gold Coast and Cronulla. Canterbury were down in position 14 for second half performance. So Johnston with the head tape now. Outside the 20, out to 30. 6 nil to score, Gus is right. There's nothing in this grand final. It's there to be taken. Ava playing the ball about seven metres his own side of halfway. Here is Turner in the black headgear. He's had a lot of concussions. But the Medicos have passed him fit. The Harvey Norman spider can. He come down the ground. One and a quarter minutes to go. We've got uh, three tackles on this set to complete. Now it's Reynolds. He kicks. He's looking for Walker. Walker's after it. Perrett's after it. Perrett's marked it. And then grounded the ball in goal. So it'll be a line drop out. I think they've got 40 seconds to take it. Yeah, and since Coruscant's left the field, it's been Luke Keary that's gone and parked himself at dummy half. That puts together the old firm, Sutton and Reynolds. But it's been just more of the tower game from South Sydney. The clock ticking down, ticking down, ticking down. The Bulldogs will take as much time as they can. But there's your dummy half at the moment, Luke Keary. Very versatile. So do they go for the one? Yeah, why not? Line drop out then off the Canterbury team from under the bar. It's a good kick. And the bounce helped a lot. George Burgess with a big run back. He's lost it. Not offside. Not offside. Sam or George, has, Josh Reynolds. George has lost the ball. He goes back with such venom. The collision, the impact between the brick wall and the runner is absolutely immense. Look at it nothing left in the tank and a great tackle by Fanukin. that's brave isn't it from both players the man running the ball oh, and Fanukin who gets underneath and lifts him I'm a little confused as to why the Bulldogs race to pack the scrum with only nine seconds to play it can what are they going to try yeah. it'll come wide immediately out to Josh Morris and he's put down near the halfway line as the siren sounds there's a bit of a little bit of a dust up there, but nothing in it at all. The players head for the sheds. South Sydney leading at half time, 6-0. Brad Fittler on the ground. He just got Sam Burgess. 
How's the cheekbone, mate? What? How's the cheekbone? Yeah, it's fine. It's gone. Good luck. So, I didn't quite catch that, but we'll get... He said it's gone, did he? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brad. Coming up is Holden Halftime. Sturlo, Andrew, Darren join Cameron Williams for the VB Hard Earned First Half Highlights. There's key player cam. Brad Fittler, Brett Finch with the latest from the dressing rooms. Holden Halftime is next. This is the grand final on Channel 9. Welcome back to the grand final here at ANZ Stadium. And uh, what a night it's been. What a sensational start to the grand final with the very first hit up taken by Sam Burgess. And it was quite apparent that he was... Uh, <laughs> somebody's obviously need some glasses, but... Uh, we do wish him goodbye and good luck though, Slam and Sam, that's for sure. As John Sutton takes the red and the green out, or the Cerise and Myrtle back for the second half. Um, Sterlo, I was listening to you at half time. Does next try win this? If South Sydney scored the next try, I think they win. Canterbury, who knows? I was just talking to George Pickens at half time and he's enjoying himself, but very, very nervous. That's representative of the multitude of South fans here tonight. Well, it only cost 120,000 to get here. They're back. And this is what you work your whole off season and your whole season for this last 40 minutes on grand final day. Everything you've trained, everything you've talked about has got to be executed at this period. There's no more team talks from the coach. There's no more sessions to get it right. Today's the day it's got to happen. The Bulldogs are hanging in there, only just. They're only six behind. They can fight their way back into the contest, but you get the feeling if South Sydney rev up, as they have done in second halves for most of the season, we could be in for an explosive 40 minutes from the Rabbitohs. There's a, there's a steely look about them, isn't there? Right, both teams have used 16 players so far. No Frank Pritchard for the Dogs. And no Chris McQueen for South. In their three finals matches, Canterbury have come up with 52 points in the first half, but only 12 in the second. Yeah, mate, all That's good. the stat that would have most people worried if they follow Canterbury. Here we go with the second half. 40 minutes of the season remaining. And it sails down inside. Oh, lost and lost backwards, I thought. Referee agrees. But immediately, Canterbury are on the back foot. They play just inside the 10 metre line. That is not the start of the second half you want. Josh Reynolds it was that put it down. The only good thing about it is he, he lost the ball backwards. There was no dispute about that. Here's Finucane. And Dale will play the ball just inside the 30 metre line. And the headgear one is Tim Brown. I told you he's got three metal plates protecting a fractured skull that he suffered under friendly fire from Dale Fanukan earlier on in the year. Here's a chance to put a man into touch. Not played at by South Sydney. Not played at by South, so they come up with it. So uh, South Sydney straight away on the offensive. Marcus! Yeah, look out. This has got an ominous tone to it right now. George Burgess some time in the concussion bin he was past fit to come back and now they go away to his twin brother Tom so he'll play the ball five meters out from the Canterbury line down at the northern end of the ground and John Sutton goes back into Turner and Turner a youngster from Coonabarabran playing the ball 
And uh, it's Keary sweeping it to Sutton, and Sutton is big and strong, but he can't make an impression on the Canterbury defence. Again, Keary, who's operating the dummy half roll at the moment, and then Clark out the back, and away to Burgess, and on it goes from uh, Tom out to George, and George will play the ball. Tackle number five, Keary it is, getting it away to Reynolds, who puts a grubber kick in. They're going to try and force the big goal, and they do that. Brilliant. That's the second best thing you can come up with. Brilliant. What an explosive start to the second half for the Bunnies. Well, that all came off the back of Josh Reynolds dropping the ball. And immediately it put Souths into an attacking position, added to which, of course, was the tackle over there on the far side of the ground. Yeah, they didn't uh, actually touch the ball, South Sydney, so immediately Canterbury are on the back foot. And here's Tom Burgess taking it back inside the 30-metre line, so their first tackle is 28 metres out. And here is Clark. Jason trying to get up and play the ball. Must, must be very close to getting a penalty. Lucky to get away with that, Canterbury. Here's Tom Burgess. And he thrusts the ball out the back, so much so that Dylan Walker has to go back five metres to find Sam Burgess. And he'll play the ball ten metres out from the Canterbury line. Keary is the dummy half, and there's Sutton. The ball goes to ground. It's picked up by Johnston, and Johnston goes uh, trying to hurdle over the top of the fullback. Six more tackles. So it was touched by Canterbury. Now it's come from Keary, gone to Sutton. Now it's away to Clark, and he'll play the ball. Jason right in front of the uprights, two metres out from the line, down at the northern end of the ground. Tries to get rid of the marker. Then it's with Keary who throws the dummy, but they, they don't have any part of it, Canterbury. And Brown is there with Umbai to put him away. Now it goes from Clark, and it's gone on to Reynolds, knocked on by Burgess. And that will be the way the referee sees it. And the pack of scrum, ten metres out. Yeah, that's not South Sydney's best play. We're here, mate. Their best play is to keep going out the back, out the back, and outnumber them down the edges. That's where they traditionally score their points. And that was a bad ball there from Reynolds, putting Sam Burgess under a huge amount of pressure, especially allowing for the fact that Burgess is obviously carrying injury. Well, Gus, they were appealing that, that Trent Hodkinson played at the ball. Let's go. Heads in at the back, Tom. Still a bad play, though, wasn't it? I mean, it's, Heads in, wait, that was pressure that wasn't needed. Lock. And it lets the Bulldogs off. Tim. 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 So the Bulldogs Tim, are completing at 75%. And South Sydney are up at a bit over 80%. This is Fanuka now. Just outside the 10 metre line. Quite a break for James Graham as well. I'm assuming that when Des Hasler brings him back into the game, as Josh Jackson shows some footwork inside his own 20, that Graham will go the duration. Back out there. A couple of big guns on the bench. He's to him and as well. He's clamour. Strong charge to his 30. Now Reynolds. Josh getting out from dummy half. Appeal from Canterbury for a... A marker who was neither at marker or back the 10. That was the reason for the hands in the air. Tim Brown about to play the ball in the white head gear. Tackled by Kyle Turner in the black head gear. Just goes last away tackle. From, oh dear, that's the last tackle. Well, he's passed change from over. the ground. He's got to do something change about over. this. Change over. And he's ordered the changeover. I thought he might have penalised actually. Yeah, well, that player in the white headgear, Tim Brown, I'd like to get a look at the previous scrum. I'm pretty confident that Brown is trying to find head collision with Burgess. See that? Burgess flinched out of the way. He really went in hard trying to get some head contact with Burgess, and Burgess knew it. They came out of the scrum and exchanged words. Uh, let's play the ball, boys. But no doubt there, he was looking for a bit of collision, which front rowers used to do. They don't do so much these days, but... Given you know your opposition number is, what's this? He has a word to him. Yeah, I don't think there's any any doubt what happened there. And Burgess did say something to the referee. Players gone off, and Reynolds go 
goes away to George Burgess. Now to Adam Reynolds, back on the inside for Greg Inglis. And Inglis in an upright tackle on the 10 metre line. John Sutton has moved into dummy half right, putting Keary out into the attacking area. Here's Adam Reynolds to Luke Keary and then it's to Arvar and he is taken by Lafay. Good exhibition of attack and defence there. Played by Arvar there and it's gone away wide to Reynolds. They try and herd him back in and Reynolds he throws the ball and it's gone to Hopkinson. He'll play the ball then inside the 20. That was scrambling stuff by Canterbury. Good stuff. And here's Josh Morris now. Yeah, typical Bulldogs. They just will not give up. And here comes James Graham. They will hang around and hang around. There is no give up in the Bulldogs. Pritchard is on. Halfway line. Clemmer. Running it at John Sutton. Put down by Sutton and Turner, together with George Burgess. Now they're on the 40-metre line, south end of the ground. And Graham, it is, back into the action. Brought a big roar from the crowd when he came back. Here's Hodkinson, puts a little kick in under pressure. Inglis is going to have to fight to get back. And he just, he just surrenders in the field of play. Kerry is his dummy half to the blind side, I would have thought he would come open side, but no, he didn't, and he plays the ball on to Kiri. and uh, he loses the ball, it is picked up there by, I think it's Dale Finucane, Dylan Walker it was that lost it, and played by Finucane close to the south line, is this the turning point? Clemmer. See for yourself how close they are to the southern end. And Umbai comes away, gets it to Tony Williams, and uh, South putting plenty of material into the defence. Still they're close, aren't they? Now it's gone away. Out the back, Josh Reynolds, around second man. Hodkinson gets it away. It's out to Mitch Brown, and South slide in defence and make the tackle. Five metres out from the line. Here it is out to big Frank Pritchard and didn't quite know what to do so he decided to press the accelerator button. He plays the ball under the tackle of Clark. It's come away to Graham. Out the back play to Reynolds. There's a chance for Tony Williams. Tony Williams has scored. Canterbury's first try. If you've got Graham, Beautifully executed. I'm where he catches it. I'll take the onside. So what's Shane Hayne got to offer here? Last tackle, had a try. Just check the onside, mate, please. Well, what other team in the competition throws the ball to a front rower on the last tackle to offload to an inside back who just dribbles it beautifully into the path of that big man, Tony Williams, who stays behind the kicker perfectly. And Tim Laffey, we believe, will goal kick tonight. He is about to make it, you would think, six all. Early second half. It's so typical of the Bulldogs, isn't it? It is so typical of the Bulldogs. So T-Rex scores. And again, that's on the back of the defence at the other end of the field in the opening moments of this second half which started awfully for them, but again, the defence was good enough. to the grand final 10 on 9 coverage. Very interesting. We've got Hodkinson up to kick. Tim Laffey last week kicked three from three. And I was figuring Des Hasler might have this up his sleeve, hoping they'd got through last week. 
like to know they're using brand new balls, which doesn't happen during the year. That allow for a sweater hit. This looks easy from behind him. You don't know this. Too easy. Too easy. The Iceman. So Canterbury, they celebrate. Look at them. The blue and white army mainly stationed at the northern end of the ground. And uh, Tony Williams, who won a grand final in 2011 with Manly, is the try scorer and he salutes to the gods above. We give a huge rap tonight on the Lawler Canterbury defence, but Tim Lafite, the name is a try scorer. He was fantastic last week against Jamal Lidris and Matt Moylan. Tonight he's job, done a job against the left side attack of South Sydney, which is their more potent side. And by a fine step. Center is taken by Kyle Turner. The 10 metre line just behind him as he plays the ball. So Newton comes away out to the 20 metre line now. Second half of the grand final is 11 minutes old. And the scoreboard is now level at six all. Graham with a struggling, wriggling type of run out to the 30 metre line as they go away from the uh, spider cam and play the ball outside their 40 metre line with Graham running the ball more towards the centre of the ground. Tied up there by three of the South Sydney players, including Kyle Turner again. Now it's back to Reynolds and he puts us a kick in, not necessarily with a lot of height about it, and it's with Greg English for the carry back. And he's put down by Umbai around the legs and up over the top is Fanukan. And the previous 50 minutes now counts for naught as to carry his bundle back. All the time in possession, amount of football, the field position enjoyed by South Sydney. It is now six all with 29 minutes of the season left. Greg, Greg uh, Eastwood about to come back into the game as Souths slowly get their way back to the halfway line and they play the ball at that point of the ground with Sam Burgess making a strong contribution there to the red line at Canterbury's end of the ground. And Reynolds puts the kick up again, testing the man at the back, Perrot, and Perrot goes up above them, and it's a penalty He's game to Canterbury. He's Luke Keary was inside the 10. Players in front. He's inside the, uh, the 10, in front of the kicker. You can't do that. Yeah, they're the little things you've got to get right. If you're a metre in front of the kicker, you might as well be sitting in the grandstand. Luke, he was only Luke just Geary. in front. Luke, Luke. But the result is a penalty to the opposition, a loss of territory and a loss of tackles. It will lead into your chance to win. So is the pendulum starting to swing? Might well be the question. South Sydney very much in the ascendancy in that first half. But now Canterbury have bulldogged their way back to six points all and Eastwood appeals for a penalty. It's turned down, it's gone away to Graham and out the back to Hodkinson. Here's Frank Pritchard coming at them like a runaway train, but he's put away and put down there by, it was uh, the dummy half, Coruscant. Now it's with Williams again, through, ball out the back, Thompson's with the ball, nine metres out. Tony Williams wrecking ball stuff. Now it's on for Reynolds, puts a kick in, oh, well done. Sam Burgess, one of the plays of the game. Yeah, I think the Bulldogs had the blueprint there. You go to one side, use up the, the powerful back row of Pritchard, then move the ball the other side, use Tony Williams. These wide running back rowers, so hard to pull down. George Burgess is with the ball. Playing it inside the 30 metre line. He's come away to Ben Teo and Teo. Gets another 10 metres on the metre. Four tackles gone. They come to the halfway and it looks like Dylan Walker under there. He plays the ball and the kick is coming. And Reynolds goes high. There's a chase on it, but there's no pressure. Not that time for Perrot. And Perrot comes running away to be taken over there by Takiri, 30 metres away from the Canterbury line. Hodkinson there. That's Mitch Brown. And oh, Takiri jammed him. And uh, took him back a couple of metres there. Good work by Takiri. Here he is again. So this time it's Perrot who plays the ball. Clemmer out to the 40 metre line. Taken by Turner. 
Been very good tonight, the young man, Clemmer. Strong carries. McQueen is out there as well now. And he's gone from Gray up to Eastwood. Look at that for a tackle from the uh, number 11, Ben Teo. And I would think a bigger man in Greg Eastwood as Reynolds then plugs the ball down the ground. And Johnston comes back. That's the 30 metre line, John Sutton and Jason Clark are back on the benches. Players out on the South Sydney 40 metre line with Greg Inglis playing the ball back to uh, Apisai Kurosau. And it's gone away to Big Sam, he got back to Kurosau, he's gone through and he's pulled down just outside the 30 metre line. So Adam Reynolds goes into dummy half. Now it's away to Luke Keary. Turns it on the inside. That's Chris McQueen. He'll play the ball just outside the 20. Two tackles left on this set. Here it is coming back now for Tom Burgess. And now it's George Burgess. He's going all the way. Somebody stop him and they did. But they stopped him too late. George Burgess. Bumping and thumping his way to the line. Oh, how would you stop him? How do you stop him? George Burgess, superb. George Burgess try. He might not have had to run very far, but everything he did was just so granite-like. And to use a gussism, get out of my way. Get out of my way. 83,833 are here. That must be the biggest crowd we've had at this configuration. It is. Well, it's inspirational stuff. Sam Burgess, the offload in the middle of the field. Coruscant came up with some nice work, especially out of dummy half. And then Big George. Boom. Straight through the middle. So Adam Reynolds converts. Yeah, have a look at the work from Coruscant to drag the markers one way, which isolates the big forwards in the middle of the field. And then it's all that big man there, George Burgess. He puts a right foot step on. You see Coruscant on the Harvey Norman replay. He goes one way and it isolates the big man. And the right foot step from George Burgess. Then it's just determination. Get out of my way for a great grand final try. And look at the brothers. Yeah, James Graham was the first man to miss there. They'll get satisfaction out of that. The two Englishmen on screen. The brotherly love. Madge, the coach. Darren McCarthy. <laughs> what about Stevie Collins sitting there? She dragged him back down. Sit down, coach. So this is the highest crowd since the 2001 reconfig reconfiguration. 83,833. That's the fifth biggest crowd we've had in all matches at ANZ Stadium. But since reconfiguration, it's the biggest crowd. So. That doesn't really shock people. That know. Here's Sam Burgess up the middle. It doesn't shock anybody that, that knows the drawing power of South Sydney and Canterbury Bankstown. There's Coruscant and uh, quite a hero, quite a hero in the previous uh, try. Set up for George Burgess, makes another great run. Here he looks for support. Dylan Walker joins in. Chris McQueen is there. Walker supports him again. Five gone. Theo, Kiri, Reynolds, little kick, oh, beautifully done, but did he knock on? Referee said no, play on. I think it's Frank Pritchard. It is. He's honestly, it's a, it's a slips catch of gigantic proportions. Look at this. Look at this. He doesn't catch it, but he doesn't knock it on either. 
So, 12-6 in favour of South. Jackson. Just listen to the crowd, Rabbits. I've never heard anything like this. It's come off the head of Turner, not played at. Uh, the top of count does not get nullified. And Pritchard it was that kicked that ball. Down to Greg Inglis. In, in open field. He tramples over the top of one. But then they take him back. Tolman and Graham, the polar bears, wrestle him down. Now Sam Burgess again. He promised South Sydney he wouldn't leave without a premiership. He's not that far away from it. Oh, big, uh, big charge up the top. It'll be a shoulder, will it? Shoulder charge on David Tyrrell from James Graham. Walk away! Aiden! Walk away, Archie! It's back here, boys. Kevin, Kevin, I got it, mate, if you want to drift back. It's a shoulder charge, all right. It doesn't slide up, of course. A lot of people of the belief that that shoulder charge should be left in the game. We'll take a break and come back. I think they're going to take a kick for goal. So welcome back to the grand final, which you're watching exclusively live on the Nine Network around Australia and to 90 countries around the world. We've got Adam Reynolds about to take a penalty shot from 41 metres out right in front. To take them to an eight-point lead and he's missed it. He's gone away. He's managed to kick it dead. So it'll come back to the 20-metre line for the non-optional restart for Canterbury, which will simply mean South will come back at them with another set. They dodged the bullet there. You're, you're right. They get a bit of a break as well. <laughs> so Mitch Brown it is, it's taking the drop. And sending it down to the 30 metre line. Greg Inglis puts his hand up and says, leave it to me, leave it to me. And Ben Teo comes back strong. A few metres on their own side of the halfway. So it was really a good drop kick. There's no doubt about that. Pick it up, pick it up. The player's just on Canterbury side of halfway and they get a penalty. There's a hand on the ball. Coleman complaining. Shane Hayne not listening. So he might take another attempt at penalty. He is. Wow. He'll kick this one because he missed the last one. I reckon we'll I reckon we're behind. Okay. That's Easy right. behind. Just don't come up with the ball. That's it. Just don't come up with the ball. We're back and they have decided to take another shot. This time, same distance out on a little bit more of an angle to take them to 14-6. This one looks better. Law of averages. They favour Adam Reynolds. 14 play six with 16 minutes to go. The 2014 Telstra Premiership Grand Final. A sea of red and green at the moment. They are in the ascendancy. It's a ground record crowd under this configuration. It's the fifth biggest crowd in history. 
of this stadium that was built for the Games, the Olympic Games of 2000. And the game being played in front of not only 83,800, but in front of Cathy Freeman, who's a special guest here of the stadium tonight. 14-6 the score, and the Rabbitohs in front, and Sam Burgess. We're only going to know in the aftermath how gutsy this has been from the big Englishman. The cheek, you can see, is puffed up. We believe that it was fractured in the first tackle. A head clash between Burgess and Graham. The poster boys of the grand finals. They came together in the first tackle of the day. And we think that Sam has fractured his cheekbone and played on. That's him tackling now. And no respite for Canterbury. George Burgess has left the field. Tom Burgess goes out there. George Burgess, unbelievable tonight. Josh Morris under there. The George Burgess is no... <laughs> There's no rest for the wicket, I think, is the adage. Penalty goes to Canterbury. You come off, they put you on the bike. David Tyrrell, the offender here. Hodkinson kicks for touch. 14-6. Rabbitohs leading, and the Dogs need to be next. Pritchard. Just outside the 40-metre line. As a reminder, you'll see the four nations through the back end of October and the early part of November. Live and exclusive on nine, the four nations tournament starting on October 25. Here is a... A neat piece of work with Perrot tackled now. 25 metres out from the line. And he Tackle turned. three, Sam Perrot. Sam Perrot. Yeah. Ben Teo was saying the referees winned it. But then he, he grabbed his chin. And it appears that that will be penalised as well. Penal three. Johnny Sattler, of course, in that 1970 grand final had his jaw smashed. And uh, he, he played on. It was one of the most gallant, gutsy rugby league things I've ever, ever seen. And are uh, we seeing it reenacted 43 years later? No penalty in their own. John Sattler was captain in 71, wasn't he, when they won their last premiership? Yes, you're absolutely right, Peter. He and Bob McCarthy sitting up there and... Macca just saying to him, you're on screen, Sats, give him a wave, which he does. And the ball goes away now to James Graham and he gets it away to Josh Morris, who's under that tackle. But Souths have got a little bit of work to do here. Canterbury back to Hodkinson, goes wide to Eastwood. Eastwood kicks deftly down into the... Oh, Johnston marked it. I thought he marked it in the... Uh, Make the line! Make the line! In the in goal. Yeah. So it's come out to the 20 for the restart. Oh, Kim what? Yep. Yeah, very sensibly, South Sydney taking their time. They're in no hurry. They're eight points in front. They're within 13 minutes of a Premiership victory. That's Tom Burgess. The three brothers involved in this. Oh, Tyrrell, hammered by Graham. Graham has hammered Tyrrell. Massive tackle. Was it, was it a legal tackle? Yeah, yep. That's quite a bit. Uh, sorry, it's a scrum. I think you'll find that this has been deemed to be totally legal. There's an arm in the tackle. It's a head clash. And it's a head clash. It's a head clash. Night. That was a head clash that caused the Sam Burgess yeah. accident earlier in the night. It's a bad one, but it's a head clash. Now, the ball's gone back as well from that. And cleaned up by South Sydney. Well, I think he's ruled he's lost it, Peter, and he's going to have a scrum. James Graham pumping his troops up. Yeah, that's a worry. The crowd, the crowd behind him. didn't pass it. Rise to their feet. The Bulldog fans, South Sydney fans, want him off.
James. Well, there's, James, there's you are quite the, some concern here for on. Dave Terrell. You we'll take a break and start. come back. James, you are the captain. You act like a captain. Please. There's an appeal in chorus from the South Sydney supporters for James Graham to be uh, sent from the field, but I don't know that there's any more than an accidental head clash. Pull the tackle complete, then he went to ground and lost ball. It's not a pass, so I can't give you the ball back. So it's just a lost ball. All right. Unfortunately, that's the thing. Did you call that play on? Maybe two someone was walked out. No, I didn't call play on. I called the tackle. So we're back at the grand final and uh, Dave Tyrrell is about to be placed on the stretcher and taken from the ground. Meantime, the South Sydney fans uh, collectively are calling for something to be done about the tackle. But James Graham, it looks like a head clash. It looks like a head clash. It's a nasty one. And if I can just ask all the great players we've got in commentary today, who does this fire up the most? Does it fire up the Bulldogs because they've got the ball and James Graham's come up with a big hit? Or does it fire up South Sydney to retaliate on behalf of their fallen teammate, Andrew? Well, if you're playing for the Bulldogs, you get on the back of James Graham. I think it fires up the Bulldogs. Yeah, I'm with what the Bulldogs. About? I'm hoping both. The most salient point there for James Graham was that his arm was up and around. So it won't be a penalty against him. Smile. What about you, Brad? You're down close to the action. <laughs> well, it's fired up the extended burrow. They'll call him for him to get sent off. I've got to say, it's got to work for the dogs. It has to. But the bunnies get first shot. The bunnies get first shot. Well, I said, what they reckon? Yeah, they're not happy. Yeah, not a sight we ever want to see. Many cab out there and Dave Turrell, he's, he's an unsung hero for the Rabbits. He's the only South Sydney player this season to have played in every game. And that is quite an achievement in such exalted company. Well, what I can tell you that this extended break right here, right now, has taken all the fatigue out of the contest. Every player out there will have now recovered. Their heart rate would have come down. They'll have cooled down. And the way that these fellas train, they're ready to go now, flat out, for 12 minutes and 37 seconds. Fatigue is now no longer a factor. Both sides were starting to look ragged. This rest will bring them all on. This will be explosive, this last 12 and a half minutes. What a performance from Sam Burgess. Look at, look at that eye. Look, you can see the cheekbone. He'd be struggling to see out of that eye. So, Ray, the restart here, a scrum, Canterbury feed, 38, no, 35 metres yeah, well, out. They, they've appealed to the referee, Peter. They, they are saying that it, it was knocked backwards. But uh, he is ruling that he's ruling that it's a lost ball in the tackle. Yeah, he's Sam. Sam, when he, he signed with the with the Rabbits in 2010, there was a huge reputation about Sam Bird just coming from the north of England. I didn't know too much about him, but I have to say, he's one of the best players, one of the best forwards I've seen. He's, he's done wonders for his reputation down here, Gus. Uh, I remember when Nathan Brown first went to England, he rang me up, he said, I've just seen the next big thing. A kid called Sam Burgess. He was a teenager at the time. He said, trust me, this is the next big thing. And I think as a teenager, he played test football for Australia and virtually took them on on his own. He's come out to Australia, albeit aided by his big brothers or his little brothers, but he has phenomenal impact on this club. Most appropriately here, a standing ovation for Dave Tyrrell. As he's ferried out of the middle of the ground. With. It's interesting to hear that conversation taking place between Andrew and Gus regarding the standing of these Englishmen, Sam Burgess and James Graham in our game. I'm talking about all time Englishmen to come down here. I don't think I'd hesitate to suggest they're both in the top five. There's been plenty come down here. 
Malcolm really probably tops the, the hit parade. But these two, I think, have got to be up really high. We were just mentioning in the same breath as Malcolm really. It's testament enough. That's Jason Clark out there now. When a break like this, defensively, you can you can sometimes struggle a little bit from the restart. Lose a bit of intensity there. South Sydney got to be very, very careful. Josh Morris, 30 metres out from the South Sydney line. And Greg Eastwood it is on the second tackle. And it's a penalty. Leave it. charge against Tom Burgess. Kenny, Kenny, we've got blood here on the back of the head. And Sam Burgess has just gone across to little brother and said, settle down. Nothing silly. Well, we got 20 seconds worth of play there. This is the ricochet effect. Bang, bang, bang. You go in to hurt the opposition, you hurt one of your own. Well, he just went off for Dave Terrell, Jason Clark. Uh, shoulder charge on report. So that man... Tom Burgess is on report. We're going. And uh, Pritchard it is that takes the ball up to the 20 metre line and beyond. These are good metres. Taken down by Sam Burgess is Frank Pritchard. Now it's on for Aiden Coleman. 15 out from the line. Umbai, Graham. Linking forwards and backs, but not on this occasion. They're setting it up on the right again. Here they come to Reynolds. Reynolds back for Williams. And Williams has taken seven metres out from the line. So Souths have got to reorganise on the left side now. On Canterbury's left, that is. Tolman it is, taken down. Five gone against the Blue and Whites from Canterbury. Played there by Tolman. And it comes, put on the boot by Reynolds. Knocked down by Takiri, it's come down to South. No offside there. And South are back at the field of play. But he will take it back. He will take it back to the knock-on. Can't crap. be offside on your own in goal. But at this point in time, he's explaining to them, I fancy, that uh, it's got to be restarted with the fact that this man is in receipt of a knock-on. Yeah, Lottie Takiri knocks on in the referee's eye. And that's why we come back for the restart. Let's go, Greg! So that was close. You don't need to be told that. That was nip and tuck. Well, South Sydney are grimly defending their own try line here. And they've got about 20,000 supporters at their back down that southern end who are cheering them on. Massive blind dropout. So Perrett over to Jackson. And Josh Jackson playing the ball just outside the 40-metre line. Here's Pritchard again. And what of a wrecking ball down that left side. Ball played back for Mumbai to come to Graham again. And Graham put down. Played just inside the 20-metre line now. Reynolds shows it, then gives it. That lies with the ball. Right on the 10 metre line. Here is Aiden Tolman. Tolman is away from the tackle and then ridden down by Jason Clark. So five tackles gone against Canterbury. Can they score here? Graham out the back. Reynolds puts the kick in. Williams is coming after it. Oh, gee, that's a knock on. That's a knock on goal line dropout. That's exactly the same play as they scored from. Last tackle. James Graham, second man Reynolds, he kicks for Williams. Well, this is incredible pressure, isn't it? And like I said, fatigue has gone out of the game. That long break for the injured player to be removed has got them all playing like it's the start of the contest. The crowd, I've never seen anything like this, honestly. I've never seen anything like this. Record crowd here for this uh, configuration of the stadium. 
upwards of 83,800. Jackson back towards the 40 meter line now. And the timepiece ticks down to nine minutes of the grand final to go. Graham, 35 meters out from the line. Here's Frank Pritchard again as they keep rolling these big men up the middle of the ground. Holman wants a piece of it. There he is, back to Reynolds, out to Williams. Williams, and that come off South Sydney. Went backwards, I would have thought. So it's South Sydney's ball with Coruscant. Jackson, hold! Hold! Come on off, mate. Now he's been hit. Tackle one. I hear Tim coming in, trying to dislodge the football one-on-one. Very careful. Nine minutes is an eternity in the grand final, and only led by eight. Well, think, think of all the stoppages we've had, Peter, in the last ten minutes. Okay. What's going on here? They're back off of Aha, and a high tackle there from Josh Reynolds. Settle, settle. So, chorus out. <clears throat> We'll get the penalty. Here he comes. Don't walk in there, Josh. One Josh would imagine. So Reynolds will take the kick for touch. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes back. To, oh. Reynolds across the top, taking Corus out. He's been called out now, Reynolds. So South will get the penalty. High contact. High contact. Now, Josh Reynolds the on report. South supporters, they know that they are just eight minutes away from glory, glory to South Sydney. Do you think they're starting to believe it? I think they are. I think they're rocking and rolling, but I got a feeling that the finishing line might just be close enough for him. Here's Ava. So Kiri is operating out of dummy half, and that's a run for Tom Burgess, and that's a good run too. Under these circumstances, centimetres are handy. And now for Tio, who played the ball 35 metres away from the Canterbury line. They go to the right side, they pick up Sam Burgess. The performance, we don't really know just yet of what magnitude it has been, but it will go down, I fancy, if in fact he has got a broken cheekbone. It's one of the great rugby league stories of all time. It's gone away now for the kick across from Reynolds. And up goes McQueen, he bats it down, Inglis kicks it. And after the ball, the ball is there. Oh, yes, yes, I think so. Arvar. I think Arvar has scored. I think Arvar has got himself a try. The bouncers fooled Canterbury. Everybody thought Johnston was the man. But Arvar, trailing through like a, like a shearer's dog. I think he's pounced on a try. And he is a target, Chris McQueen, with those kind of kicks. Sword high, grabbed the football in two hands, threw it back, and very quick thinking from Greg Inglis. Chasers are on side. Chris McQueen, not a lot of game time tonight, but he gets up in front of everyone, throws it back, and Inglis sums up the situation, dabs it over the court, the, into the corner behind Thompson, bounces up over Johnson's head, and Avar scores. Avar has scored for South Sydney. There's the money. That's the money shot. Pressure, downward, control. Everything is there. It is undeniable. And one of four players to make their debut this season for South Sydney. The try score in the men's head bounced over Johnson's. That wraps it up. There's the try. There's the try, scored by Kirisam Havar. They're congratulating each other in the grandstands. 
Michael Ennis knows the magnitude of what has just happened. They were mounting a fight back, but now it's been extinguished by the red and the green. Now, I don't want to go too early. It's such wrapped up. It's two converted tries. If Adam Reynolds can land this one, and they win. What a kick from Inglis. We've said it many times, beware the second kick. The first kick didn't look all that dangerous. In fact, they allowed South Sydney with McQueen to take it. But it was the second one. Beautiful kick from Inglis. Sure, it got the good bounce. Maybe an element of luck, but in this game, you make your own luck. Arvar backed up just in case. And just in case was exactly what was needed. Reynolds. So two converted tries, the margin at 18 to 6. This one off the boot, it's coming around, it's perfect! It is red and green perfection. Yeah, the vision here from Inglis. Firstly gets the ball batted down from McQueen. And then he looks up and sees the wingman off his wing. And the ability and the skill on the Harvey Norman replay to sum up the situation perfectly. Watch where he hits this... This kick on his boot, look, on the outside, the beautiful touch. Beautiful distance, puts it over the top. An element of luck. But the bunnies are home. Well, Brett Finch on the sideline. Yes, Brett? Yeah, it's great news for uh, Bunnies fans. We have Dave Tyrrell that's back on the sideline. Obviously, he won't take any part, but it's great to see him up on the mound again. Here's Jackson taking it up towards the 20-metre line. We've got less than five minutes of the grand final to go. It's a 14-point break. It would seem impossible to come back from here. Yeah, it would seem that way. Michael Maguire would still be very, very unhappy with allowing Canterbury to get the football back from the restart as pass run by Frank Pritchard hits a South Sydney defender. Six again, Tony Williams realises, so he tucks it under the arm. So he's taken down by... Tom Burgess and plays it outside the 20 metre line. Here's Hopkinson mounting an attack. And it's with Josh, uh, Josh Morris who puts a big fend on. But he'll play the ball inside the 10 metre line. Played it back to Umbai. Pritchard, now Williams. Williams will play the ball about five out. And now we're down to four minutes. Just four minutes to go. 14 points the margin. James Graham, Josh Reynolds, the kick is marked in goal. It's going out to the 20 for the restart by Johnston. And Johnston takes the tap and sprints away down to the 40 metre line. Well, there you go. On your feet, South Sydney fans. On your feet. It's been a long, long time. 43 years. 1971 was their last premiership success and the club that has won more premierships than any team now racks up number 21 in the trophy cabinet is greg inglis on the 30 meter line and there's a little kick by john sutton weighted perfectly oh one of the canterbury players ran into the uprights they scored another try it's adam reynolds Reynolds has scored a try. A Canterbury player ran straight into the goalpost pad and that stopped him from having any effect. And Reynolds, like a thief of the night, had scored. Well, that is Domino. That is Domino. Incredible. Incredible scenes. Greg Inglis, uh, sorry, Sutton, is it? That sees there's no one at the back again. You can say it's luck, but look how many red and green jerseys are there. If there was any luck to be handed out, they were going to get it. And a couple of Bulldog players consoling Sam Perrett, the man who went into the post. Michael Maguire making his way down. Some emotion out there now in the South Sydney playing group. Oh, look at the tears. The tears in the eyes of Greg Inglis, a replicated by 16 teammates i feel certain if they haven't got tears they feel like crying 43, crying for joy 43 years ray but how far away did this appear 14 years ago when they weren't in the competition well that's right they were robbed actually 
They were banished. They were exiled. Look at Greg. Loving it. Telling the crowd, come on, love it with me. Love it with me. So here's the kick. To convert the try scored by the number seven, Adam Reynolds. It's converted. Remember the story I told you earlier. His dad marched. His dad marched in protest to get South back. Adam wanted to go with him. He said, you can't, your legs are too small. You won't be able to get the distance all the way down George Street. Look at the tears. The tears on the face of Sam Burgess. What a, what an absolute monument. And we don't know the full story yet, do we? We've got a fair idea. Tears of joy from grown heroes. Burgess, uncontrollable. Inglis the same. Wonderful rugby league moments here. And the gladiator. So the kickoff was brought back by Ben Teo. Seconds to go, really. Only a minute. Madge is there. Isaac Luke down there as well as Dylan Walker winds it up. They've been brave tonight, Canterbury. But finally a scoreline that reflects how good South Sydney have been. Burgess, Tom, over halfway. 26 to 6. And Keary makes a dart. Gets the ball away to G.I. G.I.'s going to score. He's going to put another nail in the coffin. And the Goanna crawls down to the northern end. South Sydney players leaping on top of the pile. Incredible scenes. Absolutely incredible scenes here of jubilation and joy. I put it down. I think there was a forward pass involved in it, but they won't rule on that upstairs. It hasn't been awarded as yet. Well, I've got no idea why would he bother checking this. Anyway, it means nothing. Let's go to the scenes down on the sideline. The coach with his troops are having a look back on the inside. There's a run through there. It's just a bad read in defence. There's no obstruction. Inglis, powerful. Poetry in motion and across. They're worried about this decoy run here. It's a nothing. Oh, there's the forward pass. They can't rule on that. I don't know why we're looking at this. The game is over. It's one of the great moments. Let the crowd have it. Let the game have it. Greg Inglis, one of the greats of the game, has just given us a special moment, a special finish. Put up the try. And South Sydney can now celebrate. You see what it's meant to the players, what it means to the crowd, what it means to the club. The emotional scenes here, enough to make us all cry. Wonderful, wonderful performance. And they're going to give Sam Burgess the conversion. His final touch of the football in the National Rugby League. Let's hope he comes back one day. Well, I don't know that he'd be able to see the uprights. <laughs> he is he's very tearful. The tears are rolling down the cheeks, and one of his eyes is almost closed. So what odds is he to kick this goal, Guru? Well, I don't think they'd be giving it to him if it was 18 all. They put it that way. <laughs> well, he's serious about it. He just picked up some grass and threw it up in the air to see where the wind was blowing. He wants it. He wants it bad. What's he want to do? Is he want to draw this from right to left, Sturlo? You're the golf expert. No, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what he does, he's, he's been phenomenal tonight. He could have been out of this very early on. Oh, he's nearly got it. He's nearly got it. But he's got it all as far as we're concerned. Well done, South Sydney. So South Sydney, 30 points to six. Victorious after 43 years.
Yeah, Sammy Burns, how do you feel? Oh, it's, um, it's a crazy feeling. Uh, wow. Oh, good. I mean, uh, what a year. Uh, it's been fantastic 12 months. First of all, I, I want to congratulate the Bulldogs. Um, you know, I'll send my sincere condolences to Mick Ennis for missing tonight. They're a champion team. Uh, I want to send my love to Isaac Luke. Uh, I feel for him missing tonight, but we played well for our team. I want to say I love my family. And most of all, we did it for you, the fans. It's been a long time. Let's enjoy it, guys. Well done. You knew you hurt your eye early. How hard a decision was it just to play on? Yeah, um, I crack, I, it feels like I've cracked my, fit, my eye bone in the first tackle. Um, but I just played on adrenaline and my teammates talked me through it. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Uh, but I'll do it all over again, you know. It's a, it's a feeling you can't replicate. Um, you know, I'm thankful to be in this position. You know, I'm humbled to play with a team like I've played with all year. Well, we want you to do, get, do it again. Now, you're feeling good. How do you reckon Russell and your mum are feeling? Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, Russell, good on you, buddy. What a man. Um, what a club, you know, my mum is the greatest woman in the world. I just want to thank everyone, the Bulldog supporters. Um, I mean, it's been, it's been a cracking year and what a way to finish it off. So, you know, I'm going to sit back and really enjoy it and, and reflect on what's been a, a great 12 months. All right, it's going to be sad to see you go. We hope you come back. Congratulations on a fantastic effort. Cheers, Freddie. Thank you. Off to you, Finchie. I'm with the great one. Greg Inglis, now you have achieved plenty in your career, mate. But explain us what you're going through right now. Oh, no words can explain it. No, what I'm, what I'm feeling right now, I'm, I'm overjoyed by these fans that turned out here today. And you know, it's uh, 43 years in a, in a dry drought, but we bring that trophy back to Redfern. Mate, you uh, you come to South and you said you're delivering a premiership. Geez, you must be a proud man right now. Yeah. <laughs> Extremely proud. It's been a big year for me and the rest of the boys, but you know, this is what we want to do the last two years. It's hurt us really bad and oof, our boys have just dug deep and really dug in tonight. It must be so special to play with a, a group like this to be coached by such a special bloke like Michael Maguire. Yeah, and they just got the, uh, I think it's the ice bucket challenge now, but uh, you know, I know Matt for a long time and he strikes for excellence, so, so do the rest of us. Thank you very much, Greg. You go and enjoy it. What a sensational year and a great game. All right, probably everyone back home. Love yous. Well, how about that? The elation and the relief. 43 years of pain blown away. We'll come back for the official presentation and we'll try to catch up with some of the superstars of this game. James Graham amongst them. Welcome back to ANZ. Sam and his mum. He looks like Rocky Balboa. And the crowd is still cheering here. 43 years they've been bottled up, these emotions. But they're pouring out now. And what a great sight that is. Isaac Luke. They took this game off him at the judiciary. And strictly speaking, he's not meant to be on the field of play at any stage, but the NRL does have a heart, it seems. And what are they exchanging here? They've shared a vision, these two. Started 10 years ago for Russell Crowe, more recently for Sam, but what a battle they have fought and won here. They rang the bell earlier, the South Bell. Our game is tailor-made for heroes, Cameron, and for heroics. We saw that tonight from Sam Burgess, first tackle of the game. 80 minutes later, he's standing tall. And don't forget, there were two teams here tonight, and this game was in the balance with 10 to go. 
Peter, it's the longest campaign that a footballer fights is the one to win the grand final. And to multiply that by what it means to Russell Crowe and the rest of these South Sydney supporters, it's amazing to be here right now. It's, it's great. And, I, and when Sam Burgess was in tears, it, it was enough to bring Rowan men to cry, but no doubt about that. I have no affiliation with South Sydney. I admire them. I'm glad they're in the, the competition. And I certainly respect what they've gone through to, to get where they are today. But if you're not touched by that, then you've got a very tough heart. Darren's yeah. one of the great grand final victories. Well, they had to fight for it. I, I think the scoreline in the end reflected the difference between the teams. But it's just, a, it's just been a moving experience. You see, Isaac Luke there, but I have not felt an atmosphere at a grand final like this. They've waited a long time, a lot of people a lifetime. So it's amazing and there's, I'm sure there's going to be some sore heads at Redfern tomorrow. When you believe long enough, it must be an outpouring when that all comes to fruition, as we've seen tonight. It is wonderful to see Isaac Luke in front of those flags. And so many different stories in there as well, as there always is. Ben Tio doesn't carry the profile of Sam Burgess, but he leaves the NRL. John Sutton there, local boy, has played more games in the red and green jersey than any other player. Is now the player that we all knew he, he could be, playing alongside a, a superstar in Greg Inglis. Two very, very proud locals. The other one's George Burgess. What about his try? That will live on forever, that one. Well, I thought he was the best on the field tonight. And Lottie Takiri, 14 about Lottie? years. Yeah. 14 years apart. He's born again. Well, he's just happy to be back playing in the NRL. And not even he would have believed that when he got another opportunity, that he would be doing a victory lap in front of over 83,000 fans. Let's get to the official presentation now with Ken Sutcliffe. Thank you, Ray. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How good was that? <laughs> South Sydney, the Rabbitohs are champions. I would like to welcome our official party joining me on the stage. The Prime Minister of Australia, the Honourable Tony Abbott, John Grant, IRLC Chairman Kate McKenzie, Chief Operations Officer Telstra, Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable Mike Baird, and Joyce Churchill. What a night for you, Joyce. And on our celebration stage, we have Dave Smith, NRL CEO, and Arthur Summons, Norm Proven, will be watching from home. To my left. Firstly, I'd like to announce the Clive Churchill Medal winner for 2014 and invite him to the stage to accept his medal from Joyce Churchill, who, by the way, is, work, is wearing the mighty Clive Churchill's pork pie hat all these years later. Joyce, you look beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, the Clive Churchill medal winner, Sam Burgess. Uh, well, I'm lost for words. Um, 
First of all, I just want to congratulate the Bulldogs on a great year. Uh, and they've been fantastic. Um, I'll send my best wishes out to Michael Ennis. I know it's uh, disappointing for him to miss. Um, I want to say I'm accepting this award on behalf of my team. Um, it's been the journey that we've been through all year as a team of 30 players. Uh, so one player probably don't deserve this. So I'm accepting it on behalf of my team. I want to thank my family, my mum especially, for everything she's done for me over the years. I love you, mum. I want to thank all the staff that have been a part of this ride as well. Um, I like to say I want to thank my team. Uh, last of all, I want to thank the fans for a cracking year that I'll never forget. Thank you. Have a great night. Sam Burgess, Clive Churchill medal winner. Congratulations to you, Sam. Well done. Thanks very much, Mike. We're done. I would now like to congratulate the runner-up team and call them to the stage, led by their captains, James Graham and Trent Hodkinson, and you'll be followed up by your teammates. Congratulations on a fabulous season. Bit of a tough one to take for us, but um, I'd like to thank our boys for the effort that they've not just put in today, um, throughout the year, and I extend that uh, to the whole organisation. And um, I'd also like to congratulate Sal's on um, on taking home the, the trophy today. Is he's played outstanding? But most of all, I'd like to thank the fans, the both Bulldogs, Sal's, and, and everyone else. You make this game great, and without you. Um, We'd have nothing, so thanks for everyone for turning up today. We do appreciate it as players. Thank you, Trent. Thank you, James. And could we have the Bulldogs up on stage to accept their medals for being part, and an integral part, obviously, of the 2014 Grand Final. Fellows, would you please come up on stage and be acknowledged for your part in what has been a magnificent Grand Final and a fantastic season. Bring them forward. Give them a warm round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Sam Perrett, Corey Thompson, Josh Morris. Number five, Mitch Brown, Josh Reynolds, Trent Hodkinson, Aidan Tolman, Moses Mumbai, James Graham, Josh Jackson, Tony Williams, Greg Eastwood, Tim Brown, Dale Fagain, David Clemmer, Frank Pritchard. Warm round of applause. Terrific season for the Bulldogs. I'd now like to call in our referee and touch judges to the stage. Will they please come up? Shane Hayne, Jared Sutton, Steve Carroll, and Jason Walsh, sponsored by Amy. Well done, the men in the middle.
Okay, get set. Here it is. You've been waiting 43 years. 43 years. I'd like to invite the winning team to the stage to receive their premiership rings from our official party and then invite them to join Dave and Arthur on the celebration stage. Greg Inglis. Alex Johnston. Dylan Walker. Kirsten Arba. Lottie Dakiri. Luke Kiri. Adam Reynolds. George Burgess. Abasai Kurasai. Dave Terrell. Ben Teo. Sam Burgess. Jason Clark. Kyle Turner. Chris McQueen. And Thomas Burgess. Your captain, John Sutton. And your coach, Michael McGuire. They've had a great year. I'm sure they'll be back bigger and better next year. I want to thank our boys. Yeah, the boys. We started this back in November. We did it, boys. I just want to thank Madge and our coaching staff for everything they did this year. Thank you, Madge. I want to thank our owners, Russell and Peter, for everything they've done for our team. Thank you. I want to thank our sponsors, The Crown, Fujitsu, DeLonghi and Akatel. Thanks for everything you've done. And I want to thank you members and fans out there for coming every week. Let's do this! Ladies and gentlemen, South Sydney 2014 NRL Premiers! for South Sydney, the Premiers of the NRL in 2014, but there's a whole lot more to savour, a whole lot more to soak up. We'll join the lap of honour when we come back from the break, and we'll also try to put two heroes together, Sam Burgess and the man of 1970, John Sadler. Stay with us on the wide world of sports.